Hello, Abraxas here, and I'm going to be playing some Space Engine. It's that time of the week again, so it's been a little bit since I played this. Uh, I was going to record it yesterday, it's been getting in the way. And look at this beautiful black hole. Just a lensing hoax object, this awesome galaxy. I really love the way this galaxy looks from the outside. You can kind of like see like all around it. Imagine if you were inside the Milky Way and it looked like this. You can see like this central part. And like, you're in this ring on the outside of the galaxy, it's so cool. I, I love this galaxy so much, I love ring galaxies, they just look awesome. This is possibly, I would probably say my favorite type of galaxy, because if we were like on the edge right here, we could just see this huge halo around the galaxy, and it's awesome. But uh, yeah, I played a little bit of uh, Besiege today, really good game. I am definitely going to be playing some more of that. Really awesome game. Uh, I know a lot of people don't really watch my playthroughs and stuff on this channel. They're more for the Universe Sandbox content, but I do recommend actually watching that. Uh, my first video is not gonna, not really that great because I'm still kind of learning how to play the game, but I'll figure it out. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, like, just do me the favor and if another game on my channel looks interesting, watch it. I mean, uh, I'm gonna make these videos anyways. Uh, it's my channel. I'm gonna make gameplay videos all I want. Um, it's not just going to be space content. Which reminds me, I did have a comment saying that uh, Abraxas, you, you seem like you know a lot about space. Uh, you should help me with something, something, something or another. I, I would say the complete opposite is true. I don't really know that much about space. Uh, it's just kind of something I got popular for, weirdly enough. And uh, as I say, this is much as much a learning experience for me as it is for anyone else. I do. I did actually buy a notebook specifically for uh, space engine exploration, and I'm gonna start writing down notes, like uh, just for quick reference, so I know like uh, I'll just basically keep it on my desk when I'm recording, so I know like the diameter of Earth, the mass of whatever, and the game already crashed. That's a that's a good start. Let's go ahead and relaunch this. But yeah, I'm also possibly going to order me like a uh, periodic table poster and stuff like that so I can have kind of a quick reference of what things are. Like just, you know, the minor things so I can just quickly be like, oh yeah, this is that and that is this and not get it like incorrect as much. I do that a lot. I will misspeak and then I'll realize it after I'm done recording or maybe I won't realize it and somebody will correct me. It happens, I overlook things, I'm only human, blah blah. Everybody does it. Even the best. But yeah, me being educated about space, um... On my free time, I used to, before I even like had a YouTube channel, I would watch a lot of space documentaries and stuff like that. But it doesn't make me like an expert physicist or anything, in fact I'm terrible at math and all that, so... Yeah, I'm I'm not really that great. Um, <laughs> Galaxy looks weird from a distance, though. So. Look at that. It's like a little bullseye. But yeah, I, I'm not I'm not very good at math. Uh, for people who have been here for a while, uh, you guys already know that. You you guys are definitely aware of that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just something I want to talk about. Um, I do plan to record some Dead Space, possibly tomorrow morning, or even tonight. Heck, I might record some tonight. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip over and start doing 20 minute episodes, or like 30 minute. And I'm just going to record like 2 or 3 hours of me playing. And then I'll like make a queue of uploads, that way I don't have to worry about uh... Because with Dead Space, I, I don't use push to talk from my mic, so it does pick up a lot of background noise. Just a time when it's quiet in my house, and I can just record a bunch of episodes. I, I think that that's, that's the best way to approach that. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I guess that's been like the first five minutes of rambling, just kind of updates on my channel and stuff. 1,500 subscribers. Like, seriously, thank you guys. That is amazing. Almost about to pass 200,000 views. Probably already have. It just hasn't updated on my channel yet. Um, I, I have ways to view all this stuff, like, ahead of time, kind of, because on my channel, my sub count and my view count actually update, like, once a day. 
maybe twice a day. Uh, I could actually view all this stuff in real time, so yeah. It's like when people were saying they were my thousand subscriber, like 10 different people said that because it sat there all day saying like one or 999. Because I guess YouTube was doing some verification thing or something like that. And it's like, no, uh, there's there's no way. That that's that's not how that works. But uh yeah, anyways, let's move on to some suggestions. And uh let's start with Irish Rebel, who has two suggestions. Let's see if these will copy paste in. Ah uh, yeah, there we go. Get rid of the extra space. And this one is a cool desert. The diameter is actually very similar to Earth, 12,000 kilometers. Oh, that is beautiful. I love the shadow on the top. My frame rate. Oh, yeah. Um, speaking of the job thing, uh, I mentioned, I think, in my last episode, I do want to build a system, like a new computer, for specifically doing time-lapse videos and stuff like that. I kind of figured if I'm getting a job and if I can get enough from YouTube, which I really don't, I don't make a lot of money from YouTube, but if I can get enough money from like a job or something, I could possibly save up like a thousand bucks or like 1500 bucks over the course of a couple months or in something and possibly just rebuild my system from the ground up and use my current system as kind of that simulation rig because my current system has an i5 and I think that is good enough. It's a Haswell i5, 4690K. Yeah, I think that is good enough for Universe Sandbox 2 to do time lapses. It's an energy efficient CPU. It doesn't use too much power unless I overclock it through the roof, which I'm running 4.4 gigahertz right now as we speak. And the frame rate's not that good on Space Engine, even at 1080p. Like, my frame rate used to be better than this, but I really don't know what's bogging the game down. Yeah, I would like to build a new system. I'm thinking like a new KB Lake i7 to help me for, with like rendering and stuff since that just came out. Or I might just wait for AMD Zen, which will probably be out by the time I could actually afford a new CPU. So I'll be doing comparisons. Uh, I don't think Zen's going to be as fast as Skylake, though. I think it's going to be more like Haswell speed. So it might be beneficial for me to go for like an i7 or something because something like a w premiere doesn't actually take advantage of that many cores it only takes advantage of like four cores four threads um i've looked at comparisons of like eight core processors processors and stuff and uh i always hear that more cores is better for video rendering but adobe premiere just seems to not really care for something like handbrake yeah it makes a big difference but i don't use handbrake i just record in h.264 and render in h.264 there's no reason for me to use Handbrake, really, unless I'm trying to recover footage or something. But, uh, yeah, that's just, uh, that, I guess. I'm thinking about GTX 1070 and a KB Lake i7. There's no reason for me to get Skylake, obviously, unless I get it for a good price. They're about the same performance, so there's no real difference. But yeah, I'm thinking about just building my computer from the ground up. That might be a good idea. Might help with, the uh, this issue I'm having here. Like, what is up with my frame rate right now? You guys have seen my past videos and I get like 60 FPS. Now it's like terrible. Like, look at this. That is not 60. That is like 30. So, yeah. Sorry for rambling through your planet like that, but, uh. Yeah, it's a beautiful desert. Uh, I like the uh, snow cap on the mountain here. Or is that a volcano? Yeah, it's a volcano. So it does actually have some snow going on. Does it actually have a polar cap? That's actually a very good question. Does it? Oh, it has some uh, snowy mountains as well. So it has like high altitude snow. Does it actually have a pole on it? Like, polar cap. Let's, uh. No. There's a parent star over there. Oh, it has kind of like an Earth like moon, but it's orbiting quite close to the planet. And we have a little asteroid moon over here. I like the uh, rings. At first I thought they were black because I was looking at it from this angle and I thought that was actually very awesome. But then when I flipped over to this, this other side, it's kind of like a greenish purple color. A little bit of like a tealish cyan kind of mixed in. 
I guess that might be one reason why it's uh, running poorly. Let me slow down real quick. Because I think... No, I guess not. I don't have time moving. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the performance. It's just weird. Maybe it's because of the uh, loading speed turned up? Like, even then, I used to run higher video settings than this and get better frame rates. Hmm. Yeah, that's very confusing to me. I just don't know what's actually doing that. It's definitely not dithering. I don't have anti-aliasing on. Maybe vertical synchronization? I know, I know what it's for, I know what it does. Um, no. It's not actually fixing my stuttering problem that much. I'm getting 60 frames, but this train's also not rendered in. Because I just turned down the loading speed. And my frame rate has dipped again. Yeah, it's very odd. So I'm crashing more. My frame rate's worse. And yeah, I just don't even know how to explain that. You go back to my earlier videos, like episode 20 or something like that, that's just a guess. And my performance is not that bad, so I don't know what's really going on there. Let's go ahead and move on to Irish Rebels' next suggestion. Bring it up in the search here. Get rid of that question mark. It is a cold titan. And it looks like it's quite far away. Oh wait, is this is Milky Way Galaxy? That looks like the Milky Way, and those look like the Magellanic Clouds. Okay, so I'm gonna do something real quick. What would be the hotkey for realistic lighting? Is there a hotkey for that? It'd be nice if I didn't have to bring this up every time. Planet brightness, I didn't, when I highlighted it, it didn't show like a hotkey or anything. And these Titan worlds, I like to turn it to real, real planet brightness because they look beautiful when you do that. So it's a little bit smaller than Earth, and actually it looks like it has a decent bit of atmosphere going on. 35% of that of Earth, in fact. And got, like in the dark areas, it looks very bright blue when we look down at it. This looks like sunset, kind of, uh... Yeah, this looks like the sun just set here on Earth, pretty much, but the sun is actually out. It's right over there, because we were actually quite far, far from the star. Um, yeah, looks like uh, nitrogen and methane, I do believe. And, uh, I don't see. This is why I need to write this down, and I'm probably going to do that after I'm done recording. Is I'm going to get all these uh, formulas and write them down for quick reference so I know exactly what they are. Because every time I get them mixed up or confused and... Yeah, somebody actually left me a huge comment saying, uh... Like, what? Like, quick references and stuff. And it's like, yeah, that's probably a good idea. So I went ahead and bought a notebook for like 50 cents from the store just to kind of write this stuff down. And yeah, I think it would be very handy just to have something for quick reference. That way when I'm comparing stuff, I have like quick references to the diameter of like Pluto, Earth, Mars. Because I do that all the time. I'll be like, uh, let me check uh, Pluto real quick and see what the exact size is. And it, it, just because I, I can't memorize it off the top of my head, there's just so many planets and so many variables and stuff. And it's like, I only record this like once or twice a week now, so... Which, I'm not going to lie, I do kind of miss recording this, like, daily. I thought that was fun, but now I kind of moved on to Universe Sandbox 2 daily. Gets more views, people seem to like it more. Uh, it's a bit more unique, a little bit more fun. This, it's, it's, it's exploring planets, just checking out your guys' suggestions, and I like doing this. And yeah, I have to say, I do definitely miss doing this daily, but it's just so time-consuming. Like, I'm going to be up till probably midnight working on and editing this video and stuff. But like I said, they're going to turn a little bit more vloggy and uh, just kind of going to explain what's going on and all that. Which is a little bit awkward for me, as you can probably tell. Uh, I'm not used to doing this. And yeah. So, I mean, what is there really to talk about with these planets? Uh, I mentioned this before, that I really have a problem just repeating myself constantly. Uh, 
reading off the things that are up here in the top left. It's like you guys can read that just fine if you're truly interested. And yeah. Let's see if we can find I really like the uh star cluster up there. Actually, over here in the settings, if I turn on no, it's in the video settings. If I go here, somebody mentioned a while back that if I turn on auto exposure true sky actually looks like and I don't know if that's actually true I feel like that's maybe less realistic but I personally wouldn't know but I mean maybe maybe that is a bit more realistic what you would actually see this is a very dark planet so you would actually be able to see some stars in the sky but I mean that's a very very bright star cluster as well this is actually a galaxy isn't it no, it's actually a random star cluster just sitting above the Milky Way. I thought it was actually one of the galaxies. Hmm. Oh, look at that. We've got a big asteroid moon that kind of looks like a space potato. Hello, giant potato. Let's go ahead and move on to the next suggestion, which is from Big B. He says it's a very, very beautiful gas giant with green rings. It has many beautiful and vibrant colors in the clouds, and probably the most unique one I've come across. The search thing was popping up. I clicked on it like 10 times. Oh, it's in the Andromeda Galaxy. Um. Oh, number four from this star. Yellow Dwarf. Oh. Things are not responding at all with this game right now. That was a huge hitch right there. I'm having some serious problems with this game currently. Maybe I am due to probably build a new computer or something, or... I don't really know. Well, the rings are kind of more yellow than I would say green. It does have some green over here where the uh, kind of division is from possibly a moon or asteroid or something. The ring. Of asteroids, we got a couple just sitting right over here. Probably a bunch sitting around this gas giant, come to think of it. Oh yeah, that has a lot of asteroids orbiting around it. 18, in fact. And, uh, I wouldn't say that this is like the uh, most unique gas giant I've seen. I've seen pink ones before. But I do like the, uh, pattern it's got going on. Because normally when they're pink, you don't actually get, like, a lot of bands going through it. And, yeah, I think it's pretty cool looking. Normally, uh... When I when you see like a pink gas giant, it's kind of like a solid color with like uh, kind of the artistic look to it, I guess. Like you, you just paint it on with watercolors. I think this one is actually actually the no, it's kind of hilly. You can see the like the bumps in the clouds and stuff. Oh yeah, it's there. It's just not really that deep. Okay. Yeah, pretty cool looking gas giant. And you can see the huge shadow just being casted across the rings. As I said before, gas shines need a little bit more love. Uh, when you look at the shine through the rings, it doesn't really shine all that great like it does with Saturn. Like once you get to the edge of the rings, that's the edge of the rings. It cuts off very uh, abruptly. Saturn has like this beautiful blue shine once you get to the edge of the rings, which is really awesome. Yeah, I think the gas giants still need a lot of work in this game, but... They're still very beautiful. And check out that white shine going right there. It's kind of like a white shine on the pink, turning into a kind of more vibrant. Oh, look at that. Wait, let's get the sun there. Just kind of get it to graze into the atmosphere. There we go. There we go. Nice pink sun. Very cool. Let's move on to the next suggestion, which is from Andromeda Andromeda, who has changed his avatar. His uh, thumbnail on his channel is different. So let's go ahead and check this out. It is a random star cluster. Oh, that is bright. That is very bright. Possibly in the center of a galaxy. It is a warm desert with uh, probably a lot of gases you probably don't want to breathe. And very, very red. Let's go ahead and touch down on it. 
Oh, that's actually the color of the world, not... Oh, hello. ...of the world, it's not even like the uh, color of the atmosphere, really. The atmosphere is there, it's kind of a brownish color. But, yeah, not even a very thick atmosphere, it's just... ...very evil looking. And over there you can see, it has a giant meatball sun star thing. M6.1 Type 3 Red Giant. Oh, or not. It's a different meatball star. Okay, that was a bit weird. Let's go back to this world. And see if I could actually select that star. There we go. M8.9 IB Spectrum Type Red Supergiant. And it is a diameter of 14 astronomical units, so bigger than UI Skatai, I believe. Of course, the randomly generated stars are absurd in this game. Very cool. And like I said, it's in a star cluster, so we have all these beautiful bright stars just all around here. And I think this might just be the center of this galaxy as well. Let's see if we can find the black hole that's in the center of this cluster. Oh, this is Hogue's object. And there we go. Yeah, that is a central black hole. Let's go ahead and just land right in it. I think I've already been to this black hole before in a video, but here it is. Ooh, that is a beautiful angle of it. <laughs> Very cool. Let's just watch it spin around for a bit. So yeah, I feel like my frame rate is really degrading in this. Of course, when you're in the center of galaxies, it always does, but... I swear I used to get like 60 FPS around these things. Build a new computer and all that. And uh, I've asked this a few times before, but I have a lot more people actually watching now. What do you guys think of Patreon? Because uh, I've always had like kind of a... Uh, I, I don't know. Uncomfortable feeling about Patreon. I don't like the idea of getting money from my viewers or anything like that especially with this channel that I I mean I work hard on it but I don't feel like my video quality is up to par with other youtubers and stuff like that I don't try to make it that really and I can understand something like uh, a channel that uploads very rarely but uploads really really high quality content Someone like Veritasium, who puts a lot of work into his videos. I could understand if he had a Patreon or something. But, yeah. It's because YouTube really does kind of favor... Could have documented Galaxy right there. Check that out. A little galactic collision. YouTube favors those who upload very regularly over the people who upload rarely. Like, if those people uploaded daily, they would get a lot more views per day, obviously, because they're uploading more. Um, there's only a few people who actually get away with that, I, I would say. Other than that, it's a lot of people just cramming videos out like crazy. And is that another galactic collision? It looks like it. It's like between two spiral galaxies, or a ring galaxy and a spiral galaxy. Yep. Another galactic collision. And this one is actually uh, documented as well. So I am actually pretty close to the Milky Way, I take it. Or at least in an area where these telescopes have actually... Nope, this is definitely all kind of documented stuff. Very cool. These little, I say. They're huge. And, yeah. Uh, what do you guys think of Patreon? Um... I don't know how I feel if I were to actually make one. Uh, I don't think I'd make a lot of money from it, personally. Um, okay, I'm going to start with saying what the hell were the odds of that. This is the other suggestion from Andromeda Andromeda. But really, what the hell were the odds of that? I was flying around for a moment, rambling about this specific galactic cluster and sure as heck I visit a galaxy I, I punched in Andromeda Andromeda suggestion 
and I found this galaxy right here in the cluster I was just looking at that I was just randomly viewing. No, but wow. <laughs> I can't believe that just happened. And there's a line of elliptical galaxies. I feel like I might have been here before just because of that line of elliptical galaxies, but... Andromeda Andromeda is really good at that. He, he likes to uh, give suggestions that are in like galactic clusters and other very, very weird, unique places. And I always like his suggestions. They're always really cool to visit. And what is up with this really shallow volcano? That it's just really, really uh, plateaued into the terrain. And it's like scraping the cloud layer just barely. Like if this erupts, would it just like explode outwards into the atmosphere, leave like a huge cloud of dust and it would all just taper off into the cloud layer, like fall for forward? Or would it just make this hurricane? No. <laughs> like I, I imagine that volcano like sealing up and blowing its top like in a few ten thousands of years or something like that. And then like just kind of, because the atmosphere is pretty actually pretty thick yeah I imagine it would like kind of just blow up outwards like a nuclear explosion kind of because uh, you look at some pictures of like nuclear explosions and stuff they'll go above the cloud layer then would it just like kind of plateau off into the cloud layer don't really know so what type of world is this I believe it's a desert Let's zoom out so I can select it it's got some beautiful kind of purplish maroon rings or something like that. Maroon is like a color of red. I would say these are more pink and purple. And a nice kind of tan desert. In this beautiful galaxy that I can't believe. I, I like still that that blows my mind that I was like viewing this cluster and the galaxy uh Andromeda Andromeda wanted me to visit was like right there. Because you guys seen it, I was just flying around at random. I wasn't even looking for like a specific thing. Crazy. It looks like if you took the uh, cover off like a headphone, like a uh, earbud or something like that, and you looked at the uh, driver inside. So let's go ahead and move on to the next suggestion here. Um, Go to the edge of the universe and go to the center of the Eagle Nebula. I've been to the edge of the universe, so I'm not going to do that, but I will go to the Eagle Nebula if that's here. Oh, it certainly is. Let's go ahead and check it out. That's actually one of the better detailed nebulas that I've seen in this game. Oh, it's not so great once you actually fly. Oh, nope, there it goes. Got got darker. Oh, that's really cool. See, the nebulas don't really look that great in this game, but people already know that. Um, I really like when there's like a small compact one, like inside of the other ones, though. Because when you look at like uh, NASA pictures, Hubble pictures, stuff like that, you see like these beautiful like kind of pillars and stuff in the nebulas. And uh, yeah, I like when it's actually like manually done like that because it just looks great. Let's check out a star right next to this area. And does it have any planets? It certainly does. There's a hot oceania over here. And on it. Because it's an oceania. But there is a frozen ice world over here. And uh, I was explaining that this is potentially like CO2 and stuff like that. Yeah, uh discussion about this pretty much with uh, in the older episodes of the series. Yeah, I know what the craters are. I just call them disco craters. They're they're fun to call them disco craters. Some people get confused by it, but it's just it, it, it's a thing. And that nebula is kind of flickering weirdly. See that? But very beautiful. What type of nebula is this? Oh, this is the Pillars of Creation. I've actually been here before. 
Okay. So that's diffuse, but what is this entire nebula? Also diffuse. Hmm. What is a, a diffuse nebula? Just a nebula that's already expanded quite a ways? Because I notice most are diffuse. Um, I don't think this would be created by just a typical nova event. This looks like it would be like some kind of supernova or something like that, but probably not. Well, it looks like it'd be quite big and possibly the size of a supernova. I can't imagine that just be a typical planetary nova. Like something like the Carina Nebula, which is over here. Like, is this a supernova? Because I know the Carina Nebula is incredibly powerful for what it is. I never noticed that what the uh, shape of this was. This is the Mountain Nebula inside the Carina Nebula. And, oh, well, messed up there. That looks like kind of like a planetary nebula, while the entire Carina Nebula looks like a supernova. Is this a supernova remnant? I'm not, or like supernova, yeah, just a supernova? I'm not too sure. Then we got the Wolf Riot Star that's in the Carina Nebula. It's incredibly bright, which I've been to a billion times. And it's got its own little planetary plume going on. Very unstable star. So, yeah. Basically, a lot of these supernovas or something? Like, something like, uh, if I just fly around and find a random one real quick. Um, not really finding anything. It's making a liar out of me. There we go. This this can be a planetary nebula for all I know. Uh, maybe. It's still quite big. This diffuse is just what happens when a planetary nebula just kind of diffuses and expands to a great distance. Not really too sure. But uh, before I delay any further, let's go ahead and visit the next suggestion. Which is from the Interstellar Storm 4180. Said he had a problem in his IDs, but he's corrected them, so let's go ahead and try these out. A scorched desert. Moon. Okay, that's a hellish looking planet right there. Kind of like a nice pink, and then it's like hell right here, right here on the back. And it's got a huge reflection going on from this gas giant right here, which I can only assume is also scorched. Got a volcano down here. To match the atmosphere, of course. Everything just looks like it's covered in ash on the backside. Looks like we got a couple rock textures and stuff like that going on. Kind of gravelly, rough, uh, coarse terrain, if you will. Sedimentary rock, which does not make sense on a planet like this. That probably, I'm going to assume, has never had water on it. But who knows? <laughs> and I assume multiple cloud layers. One. Oh, no, just one. Maybe two. Nope, just one. One cloud layer. One very, very thick cloud layer. Interesting. And of course, it's hellish red glow. And there's a cyclone right there. That might be two cloud layers. Is anyone seeing a second cloud layer here, or is that just a fog layer? No, I think that's just one cloud layer. A very evil looking world. And it's a really, really detailed cloud layer too. As you can see, it's actually got a kind of heavy bump mapping going on. Let's let it render in. It's loading. Still loading. Still loading. And there it goes. It's very bumpy, kind of like the uh, surface of the gas giants, as you can see. Very cool. About the next suggestion. Sorry, I had a little bit of trouble copy pasting that. Which is from the same person. Um, this isn't working. Maybe the space is not supposed to be here. Let's give that a try. Maybe that space was supposed to be a dash. Let's 
Yeah, that's supposed to be a dash, I assume. It's a temper terror with life, so I can pretty well assume that's what this was intended to be. I mentioned in a recent video, a uh, Universe Sandbox 2 video, that uh, Space Engine has like very similar craters to the ones I actually created on Universe Sandbox 2. I think it was from the supernova for like explosion of the moon or something like that. It was one of my more, very, more like recent videos. Craters, where you could actually go very, very deep below the water, because it looks like a massive collision happened here. So if we go to the center here, we're currently 7 kilometers under sea, sea level. So that is incredibly deep. And you can see where it kicks up some terrain and stuff. And I'm not really seeing much terrain, no continents really on this side of the world. Just a lot of craters. So let's go ahead and turn up the ambient lighting real quick. And see if we can find a continent on the other side. Not seeing anything. This is a very odd world. It's basically an Oceania that's been pelted with craters. Pelted with uh, meteors and... This is the, I guess, kind of result of it. It's only a Terra because some of the terrain was kicked up, it looks like. And there's a lot of volcanic activity. Probably because of all the tectonic shift of all these craters. Or asteroids hitting the planet. I would imagine, at least. Probably keeping it quite crazy on the inside of this world, but let's go ahead and land right here and see what type of life texture we got going on. Because this is a terrestrial world. Or it does have terrestrial life. Something here. It's kind of that generic life texture, but it's actually got a purple color to it. It's not green. Which gives it kind of a really cool look. Oh, that's clearly the uh, kind of oak trees in the uh, dry area or something like that. It's very clearly like some type of treetops. That looks like pine trees or something. Definitely a lot of trees, but they are purple trees, which is really cool. When you zoom out, it looks like it's going to be like green or something, but no, it's definitely like kind of a purple world. And you see the uh, water has actually got like a kind of reddish purple tinge to it as well. It's just the uh, kind of blue atmosphere misleading. Let's go ahead and land right next to this volcano and check out the water. Yeah, it's actually very red water. Very cool looking Terra. Let's go ahead and check out the next suggestion. Grant Fred asks me to explore the Seven Sisters, Pleiades. Um... I have an entire dedicated video on that, and I do believe I've visited it in one of my very recent videos, probably my last video. But yeah, I have a dedicated video on it, I'll just go over there, I'm not actually going to visit any worlds in it. But, uh, here you go, Pleiades, which, uh, yeah, not as distinguishable when you actually go to it as it is visible from Earth, but, uh, clouds are really nice. And it's just filled with wonderful blue stars. Let's go to... What is it? Shift G? No. Control G. No. Shift H. Shift H. Shift H. There we go. Let's go to Earth. And look at Pleiades from Earth. Ah, oh, look at that beautiful nighttime sky. Or, not really sky, but... The city lights in the night sky. Not sky. It's not the sky. That's red. And there's Pleiades. You know it's actually visible in Arma because Arma actually uses uh, constellations in its night sky. You can actually navigate by the stars in both Arma 2 and 3. Uh, I think it does it in Rust. I don't know if it does it in Minecraft. Uh, I think it does it in Rust. I know it does it in Universe Sandbox 2 because it uses a kind of texture of the Milky Way. Uh, this galaxy, or not galaxy, this uh, cluster here is visible from, well, Earth. You can see it in the sky. It's actually one of the most visible and most notable kind of little constellations. But uh, 
Yeah, it's also uh, in a lot of video games, if you actually look around in the sky. I don't know what other games really have it. I know for fact Arma does. I see it all the time in Arma. And I think Minecraft might actually have the Pleiades Nebula. But I could be incorrect about that. Do call me out on that one. Uh, you can call me Gabriel, by the way. That is from Gaber Mercy. And, uh... Okay, so I'll call you Gabriel. He says, anyways, visit this planet. It is a Terra with purple life that is in a binary orbit with a temperate desert. The Terra also has unique islands and continents, at least to me. Let's go ahead and check it out. That purple life. Now, I think Anton had a, had a video on this recently. I don't think I've watched it, but uh, I think it was like titled something about purple life or something like that. Like Earth was used to be purple. Should probably go watch that video. If I'm correct, the reason why things are purple, I know there's like purple plum trees and stuff like that, is because there is a certain chemical that does not exist in that kind of plant or something like that, or does exist in that plant. It's a specific chemical that makes the uh, plant life purple, but it's completely normal and natural. There's like reasons why our plants are green now compared to like what they would be or something like that. I forget what the chemical is called, but I've heard of this. Uh, it's actually something you would learn in like biology and stuff. And I'm seeing like kind of purple treetops, so that's pretty cool. I don't know what this is. Uh, I think that's just a messy generic life texture. I just call it the generic life texture. It just looks like, like a roof forest or something like that. Looks like just kind of a noisy mess of what could just be life because typically it's green or purple and depending on what kind of world. But yeah, very purple looking world and a very saturated blue atmosphere. I do have real planet brightness on. If I turn it off, it gets a little bit brighter. And I think I'm just going to leave that on for the rest of this episode unless I run into some reason to turn it off. And it looks like we are in some type of elliptical galaxy. You can tell by it's kind of tannish, I don't know, bronze color, I guess. And let's check out the beautiful sunset on this world. Which I do have the ambient lighting turned up. Let me just go ahead and default that. There we go. So if you're in the center of one of these galaxies, even your night sky would probably be very illuminated. And the center of galaxies are actually incredibly bright. It basically seems like sunlight all the way around. But the game doesn't really simulate that. And that is kind of like a pale blood red in the night sky. Uh, I can't find the sun. Is that the sun? That is a very distant star if that is the parenting star. Well, it sets sooner than that. But I assume not. Oh, there's a parent star. What is that? Must be a binary star. Did he say it was a binary star? No, he said it was a binary orbit with a temperate desert, but I guess it's a binary star system or something like that? Possibly? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Let's uh, go back to this world. And let's check out its kind of sister moon planet thing. I can't find it. So I'd be here, here, Oh no, the desert's actually the primary planet here. And there it is, a beautiful temperate desert with kind of a tan color and some purple-ish craters. Very nice, has a huge kind of basin on here filled with a bunch of smaller craters. It's almost like a Solana. And the aurora is not quite visible from the daytime sky. That's unfortunate. If I go over somewhere where it's possibly a bit darker, I should be able to see it. Like right here. Yeah, you can start to see the aurora. Very nice. Sorry, jump cut, interruption stuff. But I really like the sunset on this world. It has like a nice purple hue to it.
kind of really complimentary to a desert, I would say. It's also very shiny. Let's go back to that Terra world, which is right over there. Nice kind of blue gem in the sky. Checking out this continent that he mentioned. Yeah, it's actually a very big continent. It actually looks like a super continent. Not just like a normal small continent. So, I mean, Earth has gone through quite a few of these phases. The latest one, I believe, was Pangea. Just a big, massive supercontinent, so maybe a large collision will happen, or it'll just divide with tectonic activity and become a bunch of smaller continents or something. Very cool. And look at that big galaxy in the background. I think that might be the Andromeda galaxy. I think we're in one of those uh, elliptical galaxies outside Andromeda. Oh yeah, it certainly is. Andromeda is a very distinguishable galaxy in this game. The Milky Way textures were used quite a bit. Andromeda, a little bit less. And that might be the central supermassive black hole. Here we go. It's always freaky how they pop in. Oh wow, that is very dark, the accretion disk. Just uh, fly toward it. Watch this beautiful blue shift happen. And we're gone. So let's go ahead and move on to the next suggestion. The black box asked me to visit Thuban. I think that's pronounced. I could be wrong. Thuban. Oh, that is actually an object on here. It's a star, Draconis, or 11 Draconis, or maybe that's just the telescope name, I'm not sure. Okay, we have something interesting going on here. We have a red dwarf with a bluish color from a display. Oh. <laughs> okay, that is obviously a much, much brighter star, which is a white giant. Look at that, it's illuminating a star. That's something that I don't actually see too often in this game. And what's cool about it is I can actually see this beautiful bump map from the star's terrain. Look at that. Stars are awesome when they have shadows. Yeah, that is, that is definitely a sight I don't see too, too commonly in this game. And that is very cool looking. And is there any planets orbiting around these? No, it's just uh, these two objects. Nice suggestion. And he wants me to visit Alpha Draconis, which is, is it this? Maybe. Let's see. Doesn't appear to be an object in the game, so I'm assuming he's talking about this. Nonetheless, very cool little system. Uh, Jacob Plays says, visit HD 15546B. Anton's video. What? Is it a planet from Anton's video? A cold gas giant. Early illuminated. I do have ambient lighting turned up. There we go. Oh, that is a nice beautiful blue color. And the ring's even like a nice blue. You see the shadow partially on there. Kind of dim. And that is a beautiful world. Direct imaging, 2014, semi-major axis of 53 astronomical units. Let's uh, bring this up. Sequence star, 1000 degrees. The planet temperature is, where is the temperature? Temperature, negative 156 degrees. Very cold world. Hydrogen helium as is typical with gas giants. I assume no moons, since it is a kind of world. Nice. Uh, I'm sure there's a reason for this world to exist, um, or for Anton to feature this world, but I don't know if I've seen the video on that or not. Um, I don't know what's specifically unique about this world for it to justify a video, so... There's something going on here, and... Those are some very weird looking auroras. Ah, that's that's weird how that rendered out. 
Hmm. Yeah, not too sure what's uh, going on here. What's so unique about this world and what's specific about it. But it's a very beautiful looking world nonetheless, with some very weird looking auroras. So let's check out the next suggestion, which is from Andrew. And he says it's a pretty cool Terra. Uh, copy paste is not working. Guys. Ooh, we got an eclipse. Looks like an asteroid eclipse, judging by its potato-like complexion. Where is that asteroid? There you are. It is a potato asteroid. For a second there, I thought it had clouds. I was going to say, it's an asteroid with an atmosphere. I like asteroids with atmospheres. But no. Fortunately, it is just a potato. So let's check out this world. Looks yellow. Um, carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen. It looks like something I would not want to breathe, though. <laughs> like, if I saw this world, and they said it was safe, I think it was safe. I, I, would, I would avoid this world. It's actually kind of Earth-like, though. Nice green terrain. Got some treetops there. Got a little bit of that weird clover stuff going on there. Not sure if you guys could even see my cursor blending in there, but this stuff. And got some kind of dry terrain with some trees. Very cool. Lovely eroded hills with that weird water effect going on. That I believe it only exists to kind of make it look better from a distance. Some winded sand. Pink atmosphere. It's yellow, but it fades off to a pink. Let's see what the sunset looks like on a yellow world. That has multiple cloud layers. Looks like three cloud layers, in fact. The sunset is a very vibrant pink that fades off to a blue. To a purple. Oh, that was very cool. And there's a huge, beautiful comet tail in the sky. Possibly from some other worlds? Looks like a lot of comets. I say comets, comets. Protoplanetary disk, I do believe is how that's pronounced. Very cool. Let's go ahead and check out the next suggestion. Next suggestion is one that I'm not going to humor because it's been kind of played out now. But it has to do with a planet with very, very large rings. Uh, this is not interesting. Uh, wanted me to visit something that I guess I missed. Oh, no, no, no. He wants me to go to that quasar visited, I guess, in one of my previous videos. So, here we go. Quasar. Uh, there's nothing really unique about the quasars, other than, uh... It just says quasar. The central black hole is essentially... Central black hole. I don't think there's anything specific about it, parameter-wise. But this is a quasar. It has huge plumes of... Just very very superheated energy and gas just shooting out the uh, poles of it at a 90 degree axis of like its uh, accretion disk so he says it's been a while since I requested a location but go back to the quasar you found at the beginning of the video and try finding a nebula nebulas and quasar look really weird they look like es the Eskimo nebula if you're wondering what they look like also you do find one go to the star category and put it Terra Put in Terra and put in Terra around 100 light years away. And find the nearest Terra. You will find crazy views. Um, let's try finding a Terra. Um, that's not working. That's not working either. There. Jeez. I don't. I don't know what's going on with this game at all. Filter. I had to click things like five times. Okay, uh, star doesn't matter. Objects to search, planet only. Um, planet perimeters, Terra. Okay, 
Let's uh, check out this one, which is not very far away at all. Things are not responding. Is this the Terra? Okay, it's warm Terra. There's a black hole with an accretion disk nearby. I don't see anything too unique going on with this Terra, other than the clouds were rendering a little bit weird there. So, is there anything unique about this Terra? Not that I'm really seeing. Oh. Ah, oh, never mind. <laughs> I thought the temperature of this Terra was 58,000 degrees. No, that was the black hole. Unique's really going on here. Seeing anything massive going on there. Uh, let's check out this black hole, though. That is apparently stealing material from this star. Got a nice, beautiful accretion disk. There is a star. Black hole, so if we get close enough to it, we should be able to actually see it. Ah, yes, there it is. Probably a very small black hole. Probably about the diameter of, like, probably smaller than Earth. Yeah, the diameter is only 66 kilometers. It's a very, very small black hole. But probably the mass of a small star or planet. Oh, large star, in fact. Yeah, in fact, it's more massive than this star, but it's smaller than Earth. Smaller than even dwarf planets, really. Very cool. I don't know what's uh, unique about the uh, Terras. Oh, that was in a star cluster. Maybe that was a mess up in the parameter right there. Uh, let's try searching one ten light years outside of the star cluster and see if that makes a difference. Oops, that's not what I wanted to go to. There we go. Search. And let's just go to this. Uh, that's a Titan. Um, yeah, I don't see what's uh, unique about these Terras. Let's uh, try the other request and try to find a nebula here. I guess the easiest way to do that would be get, get that off my screen, try to fix my performance here. Search, no, uh, turn up the galaxy view until I can find a nebula. I'm seeing clusters everywhere. Not seeing any nebulas. Is that a nebula? No, that's probably just a cluster. That's a cluster. Oh, those are some nebulas. Um, let's go to this one. Where's the nebula at? The nebula is not even here. That's weird. Let's try visiting this nebula and see if we can see this one. Oh, that one's visible. Kind of looks like a simple nebula, though. Yeah, I'm not too sure what's unique about the nebula, other than it's not a box shape, so I mean, that's a plus. Let's go to the Eskimo Nebula and see if we can uh, compare that. Here we go. Pretty. Oh no, the game crashed. Okay, let me reload it real quick. Back to the Eskimo Nebula. That was really beautiful looking. It had like a shockwave going on. Looks like a flat out like explosion or I don't know. This is next to Barnard's Loop it looks like. Pretty cool looking but that's not what the uh, galaxies look like or not galaxies, nebulas. That's very interesting. Uh, 
What always bothers me that there's no remnant in the center of these. I think it'd be very cool if there was like some kind of remnant. This is also known as the Clown Face Nebula. Anyways, I think that is the last suggestion for the video. Uh, I hope to get back to these regularly. I know I've been kind of failing at that. Uh, like I said, it's been a bu busy week for me. And uh, yeah, if you guys like the video, please leave it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe. It really does help. And I'll see you guys in the next one.